Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you to SITF ICT Business Forum 2011. Our, this year, we actually have chosen a theme which is prosper with people, productivity, and planet. And we essentially believe that three P's are critical for every business success and also to sustain the kind of business success you're looking for. From that perspective, if you look at it, if you move to the first P, we all know how important people are, and I think we don't have to refute to it. And if you if you look to the, the current SITF uh, survey which we did lately, I mean that basically talks about the kind of importance people has. Now, if if you look at it, the way the the SITF results show that industry has spoken very high, very positive about the economic outlook. And 87% of the industry says that we're going to have bottom line growth, which I think is a phenomenal response from the industry, which actually two years back was struggling to even have a top line growth. So that shows the kind of demand we have in the market, completely inside out. From that point of view, if, if you see that that also calls for a problem in a sense or a concern from industry saying that guys, that basically means we need to have more talent hunt. And that says that, that actually speaks from the perspective of say, 73% of the people say that talent retention is a problem. Definitely we will have an issue. 86% says there's a manpower cost which will go up. So that's again a concern. So while we all have a reason to smile, there's also a small concern how we can ensure that we have the right set of people across the board to make this kind of a demand happening. Now, if, if you move to the next slide, it also talks about a very interesting statistic. The local ICT companies think that 88% will be an issue of getting the right talent, whereas multinationals, contrastingly, is very comfortable with 19%. So that's a very interesting statistic, something which we will definitely address as we move along. If you move along, if you look at it, it seems that some of the functions or some of the areas which will be sought after for the next year. Solution, solutioning and architecture definitely is, is one sort of area. Then you have sales and marketing, and then pro project management, program management. These are three areas which will definitely keep most of the industry people awake all night because these are the sought after openings. Now, knowing that people being such an important aspect of the business, we have gotten a strong panel of CEOs and distinguished individuals from both IDA and WDA today to discuss on competency and talent retention. Tim Hurd is between us. Tim Hurd, MD of Robert Half Singapore, shall be facilitating the discussion. If you move to the next slide, coming to the next P of our discussion is productivity. Now, productivity in a very practical definition says very clear. It's a one-liner which says have maximum with minimum. That's how the practicality goes. Coming to the theoretical definitions of it, it says it's an embodiment of process reinvention, skillful deployment of technology and optimization of labor, obviously. But I mean, we, we believe that these are not sufficient enough to actually have the kind of productivity gain we're looking for. Productivity gain will be only have with a combination of these factors, definitely. Plus, you need to have a lot of innovation, a lot of out-of-the-box thinking. That's what it actually calls for. But only skills and technology, as I said, definitely are not going to help us. And we need to have a continuous reinvention, innovation, and out-of-the-box thinking. Now, many businesses have forgotten to harness the innovation to reinvent itself. Instead, I mean, as we all do, they are invested into only perhaps technology thinking that it brings about miracle without complementing it with out-of-the-box thinking. Now, in that context, we have invited Girja Pandey, Chairman of uh, Tata Consultancy Services Asia Pacific, to be between us to share us on a very interesting topic, innovation, which is India innovation, bottom of the pyramid innovation. He will talk about how to think out of the box using frugal engineering and to make sense of the mass market, a business segment that is ignored by the most. Doing it right, however, will bring about the growth and enhance productivity which we all talked about. Now, moving to the next P of our discussion, it's the planet part of it. Now, as we speak, we know that 
the wrath of Mother Nature can cost businesses a lot of money. I think nobody is going to refute to that. So it makes sense for us to do our bit and ensure the sustainability we're looking for. Now, saying that, we, we all talk about green IT and I think now it's a fad. We all are absolutely reading about it everywhere. Now, there are a few myths which the green enterprise innovation website has found out. We'll just check it out. It's a very interesting finance. Can you go back? Go back. Yeah, if you look at it, some say it's expensive because in order to make green IT possible in the industry, there's a lot of prerequisites for it, it demands a lot. So some say the guys it's too expensive. Some things it's a fact, as I said before, because everybody is doing it, doesn't mean I should do it as well. Third, they think, guys, it's a long laundry list of items I need to meet to make sure I'm green certified. Too complicated. And then fourth is a very interesting part of it saying, guys, I don't think it's applicable for me. And unfortunately, it's this part of the region which is uh, saying that over it. So, now, saying all these myths in place, if you look at it, remove the next slide, here it says, we have done the survey from a product vendor perspective and seen how comfortable they are in selling a green enabled product. 57% says that the company's product is green friendly. Another 20% says we are almost there. 8 persons say they don't have a plan and 60 percent is not even aware and not sure about it. But the interesting part of this whole discussion is 77 percent roughly has a positivity towards green IT. I mean, that's what it takes and that's what the preparedness for the industry is. Now, on the contrast, if we move to the next slide, if you look at it, this is from an adoption perspective. Here, people say this lack of adoption. So this is the consumer industry who wants to take it. They say, guys, there is no market out there. Some say too many competitions, difficult to choose. Some say, I don't know, should I really go for it? Do I have the right knowledge to go for it? Some say, we need the right government support to make this happen in our place. And some think it's not applicable to them at all. Roughly, the feel is that we're not prepared. We're talking about it, it's fine, but we're not prepared for it from both sectors. Now, if, if you look at it, there is a very interesting statistic from Retro, which says how do you motivate the people to at least get to the green part of it. 56% says that we can do it with some tax rebates, incentives, to basically needs or a means to motivate people to go for green green. Some say easier ways of recycling, many different ways of it. 29% thinks if I'm trained well, I might go for it. 17% again says that some new laws can enforce and compel me to do it. These are some of the interesting thoughts in the industry which basically says what it takes for us to get to the United stage. Thought on the table. Now, we are having Irvin Tan, MD of Cisco Systems, Singapore to talk about smart cities, smart planet. He will share how innovations can address environmental challenges and how solutions can help to achieve environmental sustainability. We hope that through better awareness, there is a greater pull to the green adoption. Moving on, see, we, we talked about the three piece which we have. Now, I mean, that's the whole thing we're going to run for the day. This year, SITF has decided to have a full day event. And besides the morning session, we typically examine the issues that will impact the ICT sector and provide the viewpoints into changing ICT business trends. We have also invited renowned speakers talk about emerging technologies and best practices across how it's going to help enterprises and organizations to fully harness the opportunities brought about by Infocom technologies. And I'm pleased to say that a record registration of almost 600 people are there and I think it signed up for today's conference. So definitely, kudos to all of you as well. We have invited Mr. Manoj Menon, partner of Frost & Sullivan, Singapore to update all on what are the key technologies from 2001 perspective, he will also help to facilitate a panel discussion on demystifying cloud computing and next generation network, bringing to earth some terminologies and how these two are related and what it means to the business from our point of view. Mr. Harish Pille, open source evangelist of Red Hat Asia, will also give an all idea how cloud computing can assist our businesses. Now, ICT adoption is not as simple as changing a mobile. I mean, we all know that. I mean, it's, it's not as simple as that. Hence, we also invited users to join this afternoon because the morning session is more from how IT enables and the afternoon is more from a perspective of a user, how they think they can embrace and adapt IT. Now, hence, we have also invited users to join the afternoon on a panel discussion by Raju Chelan, MD of Tech Centers Asia, 
Singapore should discuss aligning business with technology. They will share with us some of the experiences they are experiencing in the ICT industry. As you can tell, we have a fairly packed program today, and we are very privileged and honored to have such a strong lineup of speakers and panelists who are all distinguished individuals. And I would like to give my sincere thank to them for making time and effort to be with us in this conference. A special thanks to Rear Admiral Ronnie Tay again, Chief Executive IDA, who is the guest of honor as well as the keynote speaker in this conference. Now, we have seen the trends, we talked about the three P's. Now, have a quick look at the business forecast for the next year. Definitely looks positive from an overall perspective. But with this last year, we feel from the survey point of view that it's caustically optimistic. I mean, optimism is definitely there, but I think we are more reasonable comparatively conservative in drawing our bottom lines. I think last year, after the session, it was more like a quick recovery. We expected a huge turn. And after the last year, now we know what it takes to stabilize. And it's more predictable going forward. So I think that's the reason we are more optimistic, but conservatively optimistic, kind of. SIT has been the beacon and the voice of the ICT industry. Continues to look out for opportunities to provide the members with value such as market creation, helping the industry to enhance its capabilities and promote innovations. And I'm very pleased to be able to announce a few initiatives that SITF is having. Now, fresh off the press, I mean, it's just 45 minutes back, SITF has just completed an MOU signing with Nanyang Polytechnic on setting up a cloud enablement center. Driven by the cloud computing chapter, the cloud Enablement Center shall help to raise awareness, develop capabilities, and foster adoption of innovative cloud company solutions, which we all talked about now, and especially for small and medium enterprises, so as to improve their productivity, sharpen their competitive edge, and expand their market reach. It also provides an interactive platform and a showcase of cloud computing solutions for an IT industry to engage customers for. IT industry to engage customers in training, I mean, various types of training, consultancy services, project development. These are just the first three which we can use, but there are a gamut of things which we can leverage out of the cloud computing asset. We welcome all who are interested to showcase the solution at the center. Now, has anybody heard about ADR? I mean, settlement talks. We have different settlement talks for different stakeholders, but there's always a dispute which is underwritten in complex business. And I think that's the reason where the ADR comes to the fact. Uh, well, this is to provide alternative to resolve disputes, and it is especially useful if litigations are too costly to pursue, and it can be too complicated as well. So we have ADR as an option coming from WIPO, and I think we have a uh, representative from WIPO as well. SITF has established a relationship with World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, which I talked about. This relationship will help raise awareness of ADR available to ICT vendors, their partners, and customers. And we are very happy to have Mr. Ignacio Mongas, who is the Deputy Director of the WIPO Arbitration and Mitigation Center, to share more about what arbitration and mitigation means and the details of this strategic relationship in the afternoon. Being a SIT member, you will enjoy special privileges to this arrangement. Last but not least, SIT Awards, the most exciting part of it, the innovation awards that is championed by the industry and an important accolade in the ICT community is now calling for nominations. To add more excitement and vibrancy to the awards, there are new categories being added in this year. The new categories include green IT, marketing innovation, achievement of teams. This is to provide holistic recognition and only to product innovation. But the teams, the go to market program is behind innovation. If you think you have the most innovative products or the most innovative marketing campaign for that, you have an ACE team, engineering support, R&D team, sales team, please nominate them. There will be a briefing session to answer more of the questions, but in time, please visit www.sitawards.com for the details. Before I end the speech, I want to thank all the sponsors, Red Hat, Golden Sponsors, IBM and TCS, Silver Sponsors, Brother, Savage, Singtel, ST Electronics and Admissions, all the supporting organizations, IDA, WDA, ITMA, SES, and all the exhibitors, without their support, it wouldn't have been possible. I thank you all for your participation. I trust that you all 
will have a great day today, make new connections, establish new customers, new partnerships, and gain invaluable insights from the experts we have today. I wish you a productive forum and a great year ahead. Would, with a positive note and equal positive economic outlook, would like to leave a message for all of you before we get to the next forum. Thank you.